Development Hell, a term that was used for games and other media that was taking so long to make. Not for a year or two, but more than that. There are plenty of reasons why it was taking so long, such as quality assurance, lost hard drives, lots of rewrites, having George Broussard to direct your FPS, or simply too busy working on other projects. Many of these managed to get out alive, some were positively received. On today's episode, this game went through hell, but it died as it went out the door. Not to mention, this is from a company who pioneered some of the industry's innovations. As my first name also mean luck, I had to rewrite this script from November because sudden developments related to our game in question has surfaced recently. So ladies, gents, trans, and Gwen Stefani fans, welcome to Lost Legends. Malice in Wonderland, or Malice in Chains, or the development madness of Malice, or the Malice of Malice. I could do this all day. So anyways, uh, like, comment, subscribe, follow our slash lost legends, you know the drill, let's go. 40 years ago, there's a company called Argonaut Games. Founded by Jez Son, this London-based company made some bangers, like Days of Thunder on DOS, Star Fox, Yes NES Super FX Chip, and Buck Bumble. One of their standout titles is Croc, a mid-90s platformer with a cult following, despite being mediocre from what I heard by critics. The reason I'm talking about Croc is this is where we begin. Malice's creation started in the middle of Croc 2's development in 1998, sharing the same game engine and published by the same company, Fox Interactive. Inspired by Alice in Wonderland and the wonderful Wizard of Oz, it's planned to be a 3D platformer with a surreal fairy tale setting. The early story is about Alice, a lively, carefree girl playing with her dog accidentally unleashed an ancient demon spirit, Fire Incarnate. <laughs> Fire. The demon possessed her dog becoming the dog god, and then start wreaking havoc in the forest. The main hero has to undo the chaos, battle through nightmares, and most importantly, save her dog. The design document given to me was unfinished. There was a planned plot device where Alice got a bouncing furball, the final remnants of any goodness from her dog, before becoming a god. And that's where the story ends sadly. The plans in this document is akin to Croc 2 but a little more refined. In Alice's dog-saving journey, she learns how to use the four elements of magic, each with its own quirks and essential to access new areas. At one point you can turn into a cat, I think. Then a year in development, Malice suddenly got cancelled. There's a few reasons ranging from a disorganized dev team, Fox walking away from the project, and the Croc 2 engine being a nightmare to work with. Also, keep this in mind they're not only working on Malice or Croc 2, there's Alien Resurrection which soon to be out of its own development hell. Malice restarted development in July 2000, and later, Argonaut announced that Sierra is picking up the rights and publish it. With the game restarted from the ground up with a new engine, the story took a drastic shift with time traveling elements. They got the band No Doubt to voice some characters, and Gwen Stefani as the main protagonist. The game is shown in E3 2002, and at the time this looks like a promising gem. In October the game got delayed due to technical issues. However, in the following May the game got cancelled again and the publisher returned the Malice rights back to Argonaut. And so the devs are boned. They lost their publisher, the star power, and wasted too much money on the project. The only thing they could do is to get it done. So they look at the entire game and start stripping the whole thing apart and tape everything they could use to sell as the final product. By January 2004, they announced that the game is alive and will be published by Mud Duck, its Zenimax subsidiary. The Gold Master is already made before the announcement, and Malice found her way out the door and into bargain bins. Also to end this chapter, there is an anecdote from Obscure Gamers where I got the info from. <clears throat> Malice and a few other projects snuck out while the whole company poured everything into Catwoman. It was a risk that did not pay off. Uh, yeah. 
Forget what I said about Malice being the final nail in Argonaut's coffin. The game's released on April 8th, 2004 in Europe, and June 6th in North America. This is the epitome of a shell of its former self. It's a mess of beta stuff, the lack of Gwen Stefani, a forgettable stitched together story, and worst of all, the game's too easy. How easy? Well, I played through this game a few years ago blind and never died once. The closest for me dying was that fight against the Juju Man with one heart. So, the story. Well, like I said, it's heavily stripped down and you can tell right at the beginning it's taking you places. The time traveling elements are non-existent and plenty of levels were cut because they're on crunch. Oh, and not to mention, the game does have a pseudo hub area which is the Orrery. But they reused a few more places, such as the Siren Tree. Plot is mostly the same. You're this goddess of Hot Topic, Malice, who has to save the world from an ever-growing dog god who is turning this world into chaos. To do that, you have to restore the Orrery by collecting some keys, get new weapons, do a poorly done stealth mission, and eventually get inside a mecha suit to defeat the dog god once and for all. Don't worry, you haven't missed much. So, um, the gameplay. You get some magic abilities during your quest. The glide magic lets you float down very slowly, the damage magic amplifies your attack, speed magic makes you go fast, and projectile shield magic negates projectiles. You get these on the first hour of playthrough, and there's also a second set of magic that absorbs more mana. Thing is, most of them are useless since you can defeat enemies quite easily without them. Despite being too easy, for once let's try dying. It sends you to the Beach of Souls where you must engage a side quest to do... stuff then asking the Reaper to send you back to the game with only a few hearts remaining. You have to try really hard to get a game over in Malice. Don't know where I read this, but from what I read on why it's too easy, Sierra claimed that the original version is, quote, too hard for Stefani fans. And to me, that claim is just silly. It doesn't really help that health and mana is everywhere, and finding the elusive crystal hearts can be found very easily, even when there's five of them in the same room. Now, apart from difficulty being too easy and the story so forgettable, the combat's quite primitive, jumping is floaty, and sound design ranges from lacking questionable like a few bosses using stock sound effects that Doom used. Did I mention they cut a lot of corners? Lastly, what you're looking at was the PS2 version, and forgive me for this hideous bloom that isn't rendered properly on this emulator. This one looks quite flat. If you're willing to play Malice, then the Xbox version is the way to go. It looks better, plays nicer, and the differences start off immediately with the title screen, showing off some of them belt maps. The power of the Xbox, everyone. So about the bit I mentioned in the beginning where I said there's sudden developments related to Malice. When I first wrote the script last year, there is no beta build of Malice that is playable. And what remains are the two PlayStation builds and a almost full PlayStation 2 walkthrough by the PlayStation Museum, which featured Gwen Stefani's voice lines. Then I was going to tell you that the PlayStation Museum hasn't been around for over 10 years, until they're back three months ago, and then I contacted them. This makes my narrative even more stunted when the Obscure Gamers Forum uploaded the Stefani version to the Hidden Palace back in July. But... Time to do that tangent thing again. So, 
So, the good news is that Malice in its beta form is dumped to the public after 20 years. Bad news is one, it's on the Xbox, meaning that emulating this will be difficult. Two, this is actually a broken mail that came from a dev kit, and according to the uploaders, some files, including crucial ones, are overwritten or missing. Lastly, three, running this game doesn't work. I did try the same XISO method as Revolt, but it's fruitless here. I tried CXBX Reloaded, and 95% of the time I get this dreaded error message after the first few frames. But the one time I got this working, I stumbled a problem after booting up a level. Where's the game? I could see the early HUD, but nothing else. I can hear the gameplay, and the screenshots from the Hidden Palace shows it, but why can't I? Thing is, Malice, if you tend to run on CXBX Reloaded, falls into the Orange Boots category. Meaning that this game runs, but it doesn't reach gameplay. So why not try this game on real hardware? I wish I would, people, but if you look to your left... One, that's not an Xbox. That is a Blu-ray player. And two slim PS2s, but you can't really see it because, you know, it's... Video quality has gone darker. And we have the PlayStation Underground, Jam Pack Summer 2002. And to your right, this is my Hot Wheels collection. Do you see a do you see a gigantic little thing called an Xbox right around here? No, no, I don't think so. Maybe one day I'll get myself an Xbox, and I'll get one that's jailbroken. You know, just for the, just for the sake of footage. But as of now, not today. So let's get back to the show. Anyways, how about we look at the debug build by P2P Online, which shows some brief gameplay with debug stuff into it. It shows a test level, some levels, and that's it. Uh, yeah, this is a late build where Argonaut is stripping most of the game down, and it shows with the orrery talking to you. This next bit is going to be a tad tricky. You see those barrels? Jump on them. Ride them down the group river and find the second switch. Oh, and keep an eye out for hidden items while you're about it. Now, we look at a more complete build on the PS2. The Gwen Stefani version. At the start of the gameplay, you're at the present timeline where the Zion Tree got domed, and there's a war involving bird people. The game gives you a brief tutorial on how to play, and you're introduced to mechanics that the final game didn't have. Sneaking, and obtaining the pocket watch which sends you to the orrery. Which you have to reboot the place yourself for the first time you got there. There are also those ticker things that give you some info. The story for this had some major changes. First, your main quest is to save some hatchlings and collect 11 seeds to help restore nature. Your main weapons like the Mace of Clubs also had some utility than just a weapon that whacks crows good. For the club, you can use it to float down gently, or use it against earth and water elements. Yes, the magic system is much different. The Orrery is a proper hub area where you can travel to different places at different timelines, with the use of keys. This means that you could head back to the past Siren Tree to finish some side quests or find collectibles. Not to mention, the Orrery is a little more HAL 9000 than some British guy who wants to invite you for tea. You are in possession of Central Processor Chip B473233, currently missing from allocated position in Main Processor Wall. You want this rusty garbage? Another thing to add is that PSM is collecting scrap metal. If you watch through the playthrough, then it's meant for the construction for the Clockwork Hammer, and then the Mecha Malice after acquiring a processor. You know, you put the effort in to get your rewards, instead of just, you know, handing it out to you near the end of the game. The beta game also had a lot more locations. The Siren Tree is much larger with land sharks, there's a boss fight in the sewers, etc. You still have to deal with puzzles though. Oh, and uh, this version had some vulgar language because it's a T-rated game. Now move your idle ass and watch out for grass sharks! She isn't, she's huger! 
She did kill those arachnid bastards, though. Loping hell. Faithless dumb ass. Kill the bitch. Asshole. That does not compute. Still on the topic of not so playable builds. I wish it got me the PlayStation 1 build, but at least we got some high quality footage by P2P Online. This one shows a lot of stuff. The two PlayStation builds are similar, but one of them is buggier, obviously. In this footage, you mostly see a gameplay of Young Alice before her name was changed. And there's a couple instances where you're not playing as Young Alice, like the one you're being dragged by her dog through the forest, and the one time you're a cat. The one thing that's surprising to me is that the 6th gen version isn't too different. It had the environments like the Siren Tree, the Witch's Hut, the Glowworm Temple, the Robot Gardens, and even Drums and Pipes are here. I also forgot to mention that the Gwen Stefani build also had a segment where you turn to a cat, but... Bleh. Sadly, that's what the builds got before they scrapped it. By the way, there isn't any music in this game, that's just the final game's OST being played in the background. On the pre-release stuff, there is a considerable amount of content to go through. Also, there is a gap between the 1999 PlayStation build and the 2002 Stefani version. Luckily, there's a lot of screenshots of the game which took place between those two builds. The earlier builds feature two different HUDs. One is this line of patched up hearts, while the other is this weird steampunk thing that hangs from the top of the screen. It sometimes had a heart in the centerpiece, possibly that you can hold items there. The older screenshots stated from 2001 featured a lot of bump mapping, showcasing the technology of what the Xbox could do. And then there's two screenshots here that are out of place. One is the young Malice standing in front of a hut, and another featuring Mecha Malice near a river. Say what you want, I think these environments are from the PlayStation build, used as a placeholder. Next, here's a magazine ad. Cute, in a scary crush your skull kind of way. Note the T rating on the corner for strong language. Now I don't know what counts as strong language in 2002, but I'm guessing almost dropping F-bombs may be it. What the f Next, the trailers. There's a few I can show you, there's plenty of gameplay from the older builds and copyrighted music. But remember, this game features No Doubt, and of course they use songs from their Rocksteady album. Notably, Platinum Blonde Life featured in a couple trailers. Got this banger of an album from a yard sale and it does have content in this CD, but it only contained a music video of Hey Baby and some flash files I can't run. No Malice related content though. One thing I should add in these trailers, and by extension the beta, is that combat is a little more involved. Notably, the Clockwork Hammer has this lawnmower attack where you crush bugs with ease, and opening doors is a little more satisfying. That would be nice, but nah. Let's stick a handful of gears to get this contraption magically working. Works every time. If you're expecting some crazy cut content found in the recesses of Malice's data, then you're sadly mistaken. What you got is leftovers from the E3 2002 demo, a photoshopped image of Angelina Jolie for some reason, debug stuff, and a lot of unused text. Unused text when the game was still planned to be published by Sierra. This includes the credits of No Doubt, the 2002 copyright day which was once planned, and surprise surprise, Sierra Entertainment isn't the only publisher planned for this. There's them. Yeah, imagine the game being published by the same company who did Midnight Club, Red Dead Revolver, The Warriors game, and of course Grand Theft Auto. That almost happened, as seen in P2P Online's debug build. I want to think this was planned to be published by their budgetary counterpart, Global Star Software, who is known for such greats as Serious Sam The Next Encounter, Army Men Sarge's War, and the magnum opus that gives Spiral a run for his gems, Scaler. What the hell is Scaler? Oh. It is unfortunate that Argonaut didn't win out swinging, and fell flat on their face. Malice was an ambitious title which was plagued with issues. A buggy game engine, publishers walking out, tone shifts, layoffs, disorganized teams, lots of compromises, endless delays, downsizing, it's a mess. 
I mean, this is a company who worked on the Super FX chip, the Croc games, invented the definitive FPS controls for the consoles. And then they ended this legacy with a game that was planned for great things, but squandered over its internal struggles. Some of which isn't even their fault. Some games luckily got shafted because it didn't meet the expectations. Others wanted the game out in desperation for profit. And even profit isn't enough when the company you work for will be dead months later. It's sad to see Malice released in the absolute state that it is. It has plans that didn't deliver, star power that they lost, and a story that became a splintered mess for the sake of rushing things out. Malice has left a legacy as one example of a game in development more interesting than the game itself. Sometimes I do question myself why do I even cover titles that are obscure, but I'd say I'll get this done eventually, wait for the blue skeleton guy to cover it and suddenly there's a spike in views because of his fan base. Hi Matt. After finishing off the Malice Legacy, I placed this game back in the shelf. Remember why I discovered this title back in 2014, and fascinated how it became. Now in the next entry of the Lost Legends, is another example of a game that fell into disappointment. But this was the start of a major company's downfall. Make sure you subscribe for more Lost Legends, and follow my subreddit r slash Lost Legends for more content. Also, special thanks again to the PlayStation Museum for providing me the extra info for this game, and I appreciate that. And after that, I'll see you later. Bye.